Hi, this is Undead Viking. I'm here to do a quick gameplay video for an upcoming card game war game from DVG Games called Battle for Stalingrad. The components you see in front of you here are the complete components for the game. There is no board for this game as it is all going to be card based. Now, I will say, due to this is a prototype version of the game that I have received, what you see in front of you may not look at all like the final the final version of the game. And I would highly suspect that the actual version of the game will have enhanced and better components at that time. Uh, quickly, what you see in front of you is you see some tokens. These are ration tokens and these are rubble tokens. Rubble tokens are used to be placed on the spots where the battles are taking place in Stalingrad to show a deterioration of those locations. Um, this is an important effect due to the fact that it is as, as locations get destroyed, they provide less and less rations to the, the units that are controlling that area. Rations are very important to the game due to the fact that they both fuel and feed your, your forces so they're able to combat your enemy. You see here there's two large decks of action cards and two decks of force cards, both for the Germans and the Russians. Action cards are just that. They are cards that can take actions for you. Um, there are two components to the action cards. They will have an effect if you play them, such as this one. It's an airdrop, and you gain two rations for each location you control. Distribute the rations to any of your forces. This is something you could play in your turn to gain more rations if you needed them for doing your actions that particular turn. Up here you'll see this is the firefight number. When you have combat, you will discard cards, you and your opponent, back and forth to enhance or decrease the um, values of the opposing of the forces. You will place positive numbers on your own and negative numbers on your opponent. Let me see if I can find a negative one for you. Yes. So you can see here, plus one and a negative one. You would not, if your the cards are used for this effect, you would not use the text at all in that case, since they are just being used for that number that's up there. The force cards are exactly what you'd expect. They are a listing of the, the armed force that you're using. They have a cost that is located up here to introduce them as reinforcements. And you can see that they have a combat rating and a starting ration rating. Some, some forces will have special effects, such as the 16th Panzer, which has a combat of three and, and performs move orders without paying a ration cost. The Russian cards are most are fairly the same. They do action cards with a number up on top. However, Russians do have a special card in their deck for Operation Uranus, which is an ongoing effect card once they place them. They they pay the cost to play the card, and then they have an ongoing effect that inhibits their opponent until the opponent actually does what it has here. You discard this if the enemy player discards four cards. And so then you'd have to discard this at that time. The Russian players also have standard forces that you'd expect. And also cards will have like forms move orders without paying, paying a ration cost, like you saw with those panzers. And also say like this one. Ignore the first hit applied to it from every attack. And those are the, just some of the cards you'd see in that location. The final card that you see here is this, the location cards. These location cards are what I alluded to earlier with the rubble and the rations they provide. As you can see here, the Red October Steel Factory provides two rations when there is zero to three rubble on it, one when there is four to seven rubble on it, and it is destroyed once it has eight rubble tokens on it. When that happens, you flip the card over to the back and it lists destroyed on the other side. You get more than the five that you need to play the game. So one of the first things you will do is you will shuffle up these cards and you will drive five at random. And those will be the five cards that you'll start with for that particular, for that particular instance of the game that you'll be playing. In this case, we've got Pavlov's House, Central Station, Barackety Gun Factory, the Gumrack Airfield, and the Grain Elevator. Some of the cards, like the airfield, will have a special effect on them. In this case, it gains two extra rations if you control this location when you play an airdrop card. When you place these particular cards, you will put them down on the, on the board in a row. And I will show that to you just right now as I'm going to set up the game, and then I can show you exactly how you play. Alright, let's set these up. 
I've gone ahead and set up uh, the starting locations here in the middle of the board. And I've also gone ahead and set up the starting forces for each player, both the German and the Russian. At the beginning of the game, each player is allowed to go through their force card deck and choose a total of 10 points of units to place on, on the board to start with. Other units are able to be brought in later through reinforcements. Some units, like this, uh, this infantry, cost three, as you can see up here in the corner. While others, like this infantry, costs one. The different, uh, the German players are allowed to place their units in the perimeter location of each one of these contested locations. And the perimeter location is approximately located here. They aren't allowed to place any units in the control area, which is located here. The Russian player is allowed to place their units in the control area, which I have done, or behind those in the perimeter area. On your turn, and the German player will start first, you'll go through three separate phases. The supply phase, the action phase, or the uh, where you will do all of your actions such as moving your units, uh, you know, making attacks and so forth, and I'll explain those here in just a moment. And then finally, at the end of your turn, after you're done with all your actions, you get to draw five more cards from your action card deck. Now, when you do the resupply phase, any unit that is located in the perimeter location will automatically get one free ration added to their card. This is to sim uh, symbolize the fact that you're being resupplied because you're behind it from units are behind enemy lines. If you are in control of an area, and by control I mean that you have a unit in the control area and there's no opposing unit in the control area, you will gain the rations located on the particular location as I showed you earlier during when I showed you those location cards. So in this situation, if the Russian player was to begin uh, and it rained exactly as you see in front of you right now, the Russians would get all the different rations from all the locations they control, which would be these four locations. As long as there wasn't, they weren't destroyed, and because there are no German player, German units, uh, you know, vying for control for that location as well. However, the German player will go first, and we will do its resupply phase. Since each of these particular cards is located in the perimeter area, each one will get an extra ration. And yes, you do get that in the very first turn of the game. So we'll go ahead and place those rations there. And now the German player is going to be able to start with their actions. Let's go ahead and go through those. The first action I'll explain to you is very simple. It's just playing a card. Uh, you as the player go through the different action cards that you have in front of you. You will choose one, you'll play it in front of you and take the action that's located on the text of the card itself. Like in this one it says attack. It just says move one force from any area to any control area with an enemy force and declare an attack without paying a ration cost. So that's an, an option that you'd have. And this is this is something you could obviously do. There are some, some uh, situational things here because you have to have a force in uh, you know, in an area with a control area with an enemy force to do it, but it's fairly open. Some are more specific, such as this one, Rubble. Play when you are suffering hits in a location with two or more Rubble. You can stop two hits from an attack. This is something that obviously it's situational. You have to have those two Rubble in the location where the attack is being located. Others are like Chilling Cold. The enemy player must discard one ration or one action card for each location with four or more Rubble. So these are once again situational that you can take advantage of if and only if those, those particular uh, modifiers and, and situations are available to you on the board. The second action I want to show you is movement. Now movement will always cost you a ration um, for the unit that you want to move. There are three different kinds of movement. You can move any unit from any location to any perimeter location. So this particular unit is is here in this perimeter location. You can move it to like this perimeter location for a ration, or this, or all the way over here, and so on and so forth. You can advance a unit from the perimeter location they're in to 
the control area of the location they're in. That also costs a ration. So you can see, whereas if you wanted to move this unit to here, you'd have to take two move actions. One moving them to this prone action, and then another move action to get it to the to get it into this control area. The third and final type of movement is moving a unit from any control area to another control area that you either control, meaning that you have a unit that is in that spot with no opposing unit on the other side, or that is uncontrolled. So for example, if this infantry unit was in this location, I want to move it, I can move it to this location because there is it is uncontrolled and there's nobody there contesting it. Or I can't move it here, or here, or here. Now, if this particular unit was there, I could also move it to that location. However, I would not be able to move it to that location if that unit was there, because at that point it is uncontrolled because there are two units that are there on either, there's a unit on either side preventing that particular movement. So that is the three different types of movement actions that you can take. It should be noted that you can take as many actions as you wish on your turn, as long as you can pay the cost for doing those actions. The next action is Supply. Uh, supply is very simple. You just choose a card that's in your hand and discard it, and you immediately will get two rations from the pile of the ration tokens, and those particular rations can be distributed to your forces and they can be given to any of your forces regardless of what location that they happen to be in at that time. The next action you can take is a reinforce action. Once again you'll be discarding cards and the number of cards you discard are after you go through your forces you can go ahead and choose like say take this third motorized there is two you would have to discard two cards to do this and then at that point you would be able to place it on the board and then you can go ahead and move the force from your reinforcement pile which is this deck of cards here and you can move it to a location that you control or you can go ahead and place that in the perimeter so if I had that unit there once again controlling that location and I wanted to use this mo I, if I reinforced I bring this motorized unit to there it has a starting rations of one so I'd place that on the unit and it would be in that location. If I didn't have control of any location, I could still do so and bring this unit in to any perimeter location on the board. Finally, the last action that you have available to you is making an attack. Now I'm going to go into this with a little more detail. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have these three particular units attack these two units that are in that location. And I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to focus on that. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, we are very close to having a battle for control over this airfield. But the first thing that has to happen is the German player needs to move units into the control area so they can declare an attack. So they will move their units up like so, and then they will discard one ration from each of those units for moving it them up into that location. Now they'll declare an attack, which once again will eat up a ration from each of these units. Moving and attacking the same round can be very expensive. So now we are in process we're going to attack. We'll need to go ahead and first add a rubble token to the airfield to designate the fact that that has been damaged during this attack. We total up the combat values right, currently the 84th tank here, the Russian side, has a combat value of 2, while the 64th guards and 29th has a combat value of 3. On the German side, we have a 14th panzer group, which has a combat value of 4, the 384th infantry, which has a combat value of 1, and the 60th motorized, which is a combat value of 1. We have an opening values of 6 versus 5. Now, both sides get to play action cards for their firefight values if they so desire. The German player gets to start, and the German player decides to open up big, and they'll go through their cards, and they're going to go ahead and play this dive bomber's card that has a plus three total. And so we're going to go ahead and just add that right there, so we know we're adding plus three. You're not really playing it on a card, I'm just showing it there so you can go ahead and see all the numbers when we total them up. 
The Russian player is then going to turn around, and they're going to play a negative card on the German side. And you can see this card is a negative one. So they'll go ahead and place that there. Well, the German player didn't really appreciate that, so they're going to play their own negative one card, and they're going to go ahead and place that up here. And the Russian player will go ahead and play a positive card on their own side. You can see it's a plus two. And they'll go ahead and place that in that location. Remember, if you are going to place a card for the Firefight value, you won't be using the text at all that's underneath the card. You're just using those values. Now, normally cards get placed back and forth for as long as players want. A player can pass on their turn, but if the other player plays a card, they're able to. The other player then can play a card as well. The only time you stop playing cards is when both players pass in succession. So, just so I can show you how to resolve a combat, we're going to say that the German player and the Russian player both passed in succession, and we're now going to go ahead and figure out exactly what happens in this battle for the airfield. We'll total up the totals. We have four, five, six, nine, eight for the Germans. And the Russians have two, five, four, six. So we have six hits for, from the Russians that are being going to affect the Germans, and eight hits from the Germans affecting the Russians. Now we can go ahead and discard uh, these particular cards, because they no longer have any effect, and we'll go ahead and process the damage. The attacker takes the hits first. So the attacker is going to take six hits. You can't divvy those up amongst your units. You have to apply them all to one, uh, one, one group that or one unit that you have up here involved in the battle. To take care of hits, you can some uh, action cards will be able to be discarded at this point to absorb some of that damage. But the German player doesn't have any of those. But he is going to pick the 384th Infantry to to accept that those damage. Now the interesting thing here is that. You can use rations to absorb the damage, and also you can have your unit retreat, which also absorbs two as well. So, in this case, we're going to have the 384th Infantry retreat and burn up their rations. And if you'll notice, they have two rations, meaning they've taken two of the six hits, leaving them with the four. They're going to retreat for another two hits that they'll absorb. And finally, if you notice on this particular card, it says stops two extra hits when retreating. So, by moving this unit back and on into the perimeter area of this location, we have absorbed all six hits, and the 384th Infantry lives to fight another day. Now we've got eight damage that has to be applied to one of these two particular uh, units up here. Now, obviously, they don't have enough rations, so one of these two units is going to, you know, possibly be destroyed. So the, the Russian player will look and he notices that it takes three cards to bring the 64th guards and 29th back in if, they're, if he's able to save them. So he's going to choose the 84th tank and he's going to go ahead and use up the ration and he is going to go ahead and have it retreat but that's only going to take up three of the possible eight hits that he's had inflicted upon him. And so this card possibly is going to be destroyed. Now, to avoid being destroyed, the Russian player has to discard a number of action cards, in this case two, equal to the value of, of the card that's located up here. If he does this, the 84th tank will go back into his force card deck and be allowed to be drawn again as a reinforcement on their turn if they so desire. So the Russian player does that, the 84th tank is gone, and it is, you know, for all intents and purposes, maybe it's been disbanded, or, or uh, it needs to be repaired, so to speak, and that'll happen if he ever uses it during reinforcement. And then we have one particular uh, unit left that will most likely be attacked next round. But hopefully on the Russian player, we'll be able to reinforce it with other units, and perhaps even stage a counterattack against the two German units that are located in that location. And that's how you resolve an attack. The game is played on kind of a you-go-I-go go fashion. Each player takes a turn. And to win the game, you have to be in control of all five of the locations that are being used for that particular game at the end of your turn. The other player doesn't get one last shot to, to knock you off your perch or anything like that. If you have control over all five, 
you win the game. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you find the gameplay to be interesting, as I did. I had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it's very uh, uh, tactical in a way, and it's also a lot of fun, and, and it's also very historical as well. I remember reading a lot about the Battle of Stalingrad, and, and, I, and I had a lot of interesting moments as I played this with a couple of my friends who are also big war game buffs as well. So, uh, if you're interested in backing the game, I encourage you to check out the Kickstarter page uh, for more information, or go to DVG Games as well. Thank you very much. This is Undead Viking.